what is up YouTube? Uh, this would be the second video for 2021. Uh, really excited to move forward. Uh, before moving to the next topic, I just wanted to say thank you for the support on my previous video. Uh, I got around like 160 views, uh, which is very big for me already. Uh, and a uh, quick shout out to my mom. <laughs> she kind of sharing uh, this video across our network with friends. It really helps with your comments. I got a positive feedback uh, on LinkedIn as well as on my YouTube videos. Uh, it re really helps a lot. So uh, kind of uh, enables me to post more. But uh, moving on to the topic, which is uh, Dask. Uh, so Dask is kind of a replacement for Pandas um, in terms of like managing big data. So uh, ba basically it's, it's a library uh, based on Python where you used to manipulate data, like get the data from files, something like that, manipulate it, transform it, and use it further uh, in terms of data science and data engineering. I don't know if like a lot of you people have heard about it. I recently used in one of my previous projects uh, where I kind of extended the capabilities of existing pipeline by replacing like the Pandas jobs with the DAS jobs. So uh, initially I started with Pandas, so like I think uh, most of the people from data science or data engineering background would definitely know about this library. Uh, me primarily from a software engineering background, uh, I used to use for loops previously, but eventually I got to know about pandas. Uh, it kind of changed the game in terms of reading data, exploring data, something like that. And even uh, ad hoc manipulation. So uh, Pandas is very good to get in, to get in uh, as in data science and data engineering, I would say like just playing around with data, then it kind of re replaces uh, the usage of Excel. I, like, I, I really now open data files in uh, Excel. I kind of prefer using Pandas, but uh, eventually with when the data grows, when, when the pipeline grows, it kind of becomes a uh, uh, a hindrance in terms of the scale you want to achieve and I think that's where the the dust comes in uh, in terms of functionality where it kind of extends extends that functionality in and like uses parallel computing and uh, may, may kind of helps managing a bigger data set larger than memory data set uh, in distributed environments something like that so very impressive. So uh, in the official documentation, it says like they, they've got two parts. Uh, one is like scheduling. Second it, uh, is the collection. I, I kind of not used it. I won't focus on this, uh, the first one, because I already use Airflow. I'm kind of comfortable with that. But with big, big data uh, collections, I definitely use a lot of arrays, which is like the replacement of NumPy and then the, the data frames. So I won't call it replacement, look at extension of uh, all these libraries. So the same idea, like same libraries, but uh, extended over parallel computing. Uh, the best part I see would be linked like two parts. The first for Dask is uh, the APIs are very super compatible with Pandas. So if you have a, a Pandas workflow, you want to replace it with Dask, you can just like plug and play and most of the, the code is very compatible, and very easy to uh, migrate. And the second would be the parallel computing as I already mentioned. Uh, kind of helps because if you want to uh, load in like a, a huge data set which is like uh, more larger than the memory uh, that's where the, the, the dask comes in and uh, helps you out moving on just going through basic uh, virtues uh, I think it's possibly I mean anyone can go there and just check out the documentation uh, quite extensive very helpful and even the community is pretty nice moving on as I kind of mentioned earlier if you can compare side by side the bandas workflow and dask workflow it's very similar that's the beauty of it um, and that kind of helps you just replacing the existing workflow and and, and end up ditching up pandas and using this as in for the next topic i would think i, I would kind of introduce why you would want to use dask so there, there are other other libraries which are like uh spark or a, uh, other data distributed libraries where you kind of transform them but uh why would uh, das be in picture because uh, uh the main reason i would think is like uh, python so over the last few years python has been growing a lot uh the primary reason would be like a few libraries like pandas numpy scikit-learn uh it's very easy for people to get into uh, easy to use and manipulate data uh, this kind of helps people ditching uh, 
Excel file, CSV file, and just use this. Um, and in terms of within the Python framework, Pandas is the most popular one. Uh, as in, for my experience, I kind of get it already because uh, coming from a software engineering background, uh, I used to use for loops or data sets initially. Then uh, when I found out about Pandas, uh, kind of life changed <laughs> and uh, only a few syntax, few lines kind of uh, helps you do a lot of things and in an efficient and effective manner. So that's where the Pandas would be beautiful. But yeah, after like after you kind of start using Pandas, but then you eventually get the limitation because it's like in memory uh, data frames and then you use it, it would be difficult to scale with big data. And that's where Dask comes into the picture because uh, basically Dask is a, uh, is Python based and uh, and the APIs are very, very similar to what how you use Pandas, how you use scikit-learn or NumPy. I'm primarily gonna focus on Pandas because that's where my experience mainly is. So same APIs, but uh, behind the scenes, it's, it's kind of uh, doing the job, doing uh, calculating everything in, uh, in like parallel and scale it up, something like that. So you can, if you have multiple core machines, it's gonna definitely scale it up across your different cores. And if you have clusters, it's gonna scale it between different machines. And that's the kind of beauty of it. Uh, I haven't gone through everything, but uh, that's the best part of using uh, Dask, I would say. Uh, there's definitely a lot more to that. Uh, there's a lot more things like machine learning libraries, uh, machine learning APIs, and a lot more things, but I haven't used it. But uh, in this tutorial, I would mainly cover uh, how Dask is, uh, uh, how to use Dask and like getting started with uh, in terms of like basic functionalities of reading data and exploring data. Okay, so I, I kind of covered all these three topics already with the explanation. So I think uh, we should just like kind of hop in to a, a Jupyter Notebook and uh, start just using Dask. The first step would be installing Dask on your local uh, environment. Uh, very straightforward. Uh, it would be just doing a pip install. If you use pip, or Conda install if you use Conda. Uh, so I think I already have that installed, but I'll, I'll leave a link to this installation guide, which would help you getting started with it. All right, uh, moving on to the next part. Uh, I'm gonna look at uh, reading files to Dask, just comparing them with Pandas, seeing the efficiency and effectiveness and comparing a few more things. Uh, so let's just hop on to a Jupyter Notebook. Uh, and try to write some code around it, I would say. <laughs> so just created a simple Jupyter Notebook. Most of you must be familiar with that. Uh, so the first step is I am gonna try to like import a file from uh, uh, from Dask and see like uh, uh, how easy it is, just seeing the syntax and seeing like how much time it takes. So for example, I was looking at like Kegel. Kegel is a site where like it's a data science competition site where uh, people uh, host competition like upload data set as well so it's, it's more of like a data science community uh, where people interact and uh, kind of uh, work their way around data so you can definitely find a lot more different data sets there I kind of picked some random data set for Spotify which has like 160k tracks it's already like uh, uh, 17 MBs in size not 17 MBs like uh, around like 30 40 MBs in size so let me try to import that quickly. So I already downloaded it from Kegel. Uh, I leave a link for this data set if uh, you would be interested to watch this, but uh, as a base in from the Kegel, you can see what kind of attributes are there in the data set. Uh, it kind of uh, gives the artist details, uh, a few more parameters like danceability, even just I'm looking at it right now, durations, energy. So it's kind, it's kind of giving an attribute uh, across time for, for, for the soundtracks very impressive a lot, of, a lot of things can be done definitely uh, from this data set so for now I'll just focus on the basics uh, it would be easier for me even to explain so let me try to import a, a file using Dask I, I kept it in a folder yep so I have a Spotify data set folder and I've got like different uh, CSVs inside it CS different flat files so let me look at the one which has which is the, the biggest one. So this is the data.csv. Let, let's look what's there inside of it. So um, for a chain, let me, uh, let's, let me start with pandas. So 
because I'm more comfortable with pandas. So we put pandas as PD, and then uh, let's just look at um, CSV. So DF pandas. So I just did CSP DFP PD dot read CSV. So let me just try to improve the file name. Okay, Spotify reader. Yep. Yep. So let me try to look at what's there inside. All right. Uh, very quick to import using pandas as well. It's not as big of a file. Uh, even right now, pandas would be the best use case here. Not not uh, not dask, but uh, still let's just compare how much time it takes. So let me look at like how you in, in Python you can just quickly get time uh, by by including this statement. Very interesting to see. Let's just take how much time it takes to import this. So it takes 620 millisecond system something. So in total, the 704 millisecond uh, if, we, if I use pandas. So let me try dasks quickly. So, so df uh, dask is equal to dd dot read csv same syntax so let me just copy uh, i forgot to include this one so let's include the time it takes all right so you can quickly see and compare uh even the difference at this smaller data set the total time taken was 704 kind of reduced to I would say 30 times yep so you can already see the difference in the time it's it's in order of like big magnitudes definitely here so very uh, efficient already with this such a small data set uh, I would say 37 times approx uh, which is a huge win here right so definitely uh i would say like if you are starting from the beginning if you are like in, in in a team where you're working like as a data scientist and with a data engineer starting off with a task is already killing an overhead and, and uh, a repetitive work which a data engineer might have to do i would say but uh using this this data if you have a lot of flat files this would be uh, really helpful just to use task so as in for reading through dask uh, is complete let me include a few manipulation in my list dask yep so let me let me look at the data set first how it looks like so uh, so as right now you can already see you can see the data set uh, up front so you would need to compute it to see Yep. So, so once I do a compute, it is like, it already has like a DAG in backend where all the processes are in place. But once I hit compute, it kind of calculates it on the spot. That's why it's like very fast. Uh, but within a workflow, it kind of organizes it, like rearranges it itself. So if, if very similar to Spark, I would say, and uh, I won't do a lot of comparisons. I am probably not the best guy to do that, but uh, very similar there. And, uh, very easy to use as well and effective and efficient definitely all right moving on i'm gonna look at a few uh, other statements of transformation for example if i am looking at uh changing a column and seeing value counts of column like how many counts for example uh, there's a popularity score like let's look at how popularity score is uh, differentiated across its parameters so value counts this should be it right uh, compute because compute is going to do that also oh, df is not defined let me let me quickly paste this one yep so it's already giving uh how popular this score is being uh, sorted across uh and uh, like the value counts of how the popularity score is across the data set are uh, very similar to pandas i will not go into much details now 
uh, you can already like follow the documentation so moving on going back here so let's just go through a few other topics which are pending so architecture of task so a, few, uh, a, a couple of things I wanted to show in terms of architecture of task would be how how, how the user interface arranges the data so it's this this thing is already like all in the documentation so so basically a task is a large as I already told you task is a large pallet data frame compute composed of like much smaller data frames so the way it looks like is uh, like a, a whole huge DAS data frame. It looks like this. Internally, it subdivides into Pandas data frame, and then it kind of executes things in parallelly, and uh, very easy to read files and uh, do manipulations. Very simple. So clearly, in terms of uh, architecture, I'm not gonna go to into like full details now. I uh, wanna keep this video very simple, uh, very beginner friendly so moving on yep pandas was it does i kind of explained this already uh, yep so a large pandas data kind of includes this does was a spark i'm not gonna go into uh, a lot of uh, comparison between spark and uh, dask is just that uh, uh the, the main distinction i see between spark and dask is uh Dask is mostly based for Python and um, also in terms of compatibility with Python libraries, uh, I think that's where this kind of shines out. I would definitely say Spark has a, like a bigger ecosystem based on Databricks, I guess, and uh, possibly a lot more functionality, but Dask is kind of at par, not at par, but uh, kind of comparable uh, uh, for a person like me who uh, who knows his way around pandas or like python in general that's where like das outshines and like easy to use so i would kind of mark the end of this video with this now thanks a lot uh, if you have made this uh, made it so far in the video uh, i kind of uh, i hope you guys liked it as in for the outro i'm gonna close this video now uh, i think overall overall i've introduced the concept of das how it is i think that's where i just wanted to place this video uh, just giving knowledge on how, uh, basics of uh, different libraries like Dask, which may, can make your life easier. Uh, uh, and as in like the, the, the things I wanted to, the, the, the reason I wanted to keep it simple because I'm, it's, I'm kind of even right now evaluating my capabilities of uh, uh, making tutorial videos like this. And uh, also for the people, it should be very uh, simple in terms of the complexity so that they can quickly hop on to technologies like this and someone who's looking to get into pandas can also just get into dask because like that's the level of detail i'm keeping in this video i hope you guys liked it uh leave a like or subscribe if you if you kind of love my content uh i'm i'm, I'm also looking forward to add a lot more on a regular basis so thanks a lot uh have a good day